Welcome to Kidney Talk, a program of Renal Support Network, a show that streams health, happiness, and hope to the kidney community. You can download all Kidney Talk shows from iTunes and find a variety of resources to help you navigate this illness at rsnhope.org. Please welcome your host, Lori Hartwell, who has lived with kidney disease since the age of two. Well, welcome to the show, everyone. I am really excited about this show because we are going to be talking about a subject that I love. I absolutely love it, and I know it's the reason that I am coping well today after living with kidney disease for 50 years. Um, I am a certified craft addict, and that's craft with an FT, not craft with a CK, okay? that's uh, and, and I'm talking to my kin here, two board-certified art therapists, uh, Raja Asi and Kathy Peel. And I'm so excited to, to have you guys on the show and talk about art therapy and the importance of it. Thanks thank for having you. us. Yeah, thank you. So, t- so tell us a little bit about you know uh, your background. What got you into this, and where you guys are currently working now? Yeah, so we both are currently working at CS Mott Children's Hospital, which is the children's hospital underneath the University of Michigan. And we both have been. Well, Kathy's been here quite a while, longer than I have. Yeah, I've been here twenty years. And um, Raja came in as our fellow and luckily was hired on and has been here five years now. Yeah, just coming up on five years. We service all areas of the children's hospital, mainly through referrals. So our child life people and all of our other clinical staff um, and parents can send referrals to us, and um, that's how we meet our patients and families. Yeah, and one of the areas that we work in is in our outpatient dialysis clinic also. So, so that's just so fascinating. So somebody refers a, a, a patient to you for art therapy. What does that look like? Like, do you get crayons out or do you talk or uh, and me, get me a glue gun out and I'm ecstatic? Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, um, yeah, the first thing is just a really general meet and greet to try and find out what their needs are. So, um, just kind of trying to gauge how we can be helpful. Sometimes, um, you know, kids are already great artists and they want glue guns, like you were saying. They want supplies and they want to get their creative mojo going. And so we um, kind of set them up. Some kids need some inspiration, and so we're there for that. We also have carts that we take bedside, so that's always intriguing for the kids to kind of explore and see what we have and get those creative juices flowing. So, and... um we really encourage our family members to take the time to do that, too, to engage in art. Um, it's not just for the patient. It's really for everyone that's involved in their care. And so it just kind of goes from there. It's so important. I mean, you know, uh, my mom was crafty, and uh, I'm probably a higher-level snobby crafty. Like, I like to use all the good supplies. But I remember she got contact paper and my peritoneal dialysis boxes because we didn't have, you know, hardly any money. And she made shelving units out of it. I mean, she yeah. cut them up. And, I mean, I'm like, you know, that, I mean, she'd probably be a hit with a recycled TV show today. But I just <laughs> remember that she was always thinking of creative ways to um, to use food or something like that. So it's so important when the whole family gets involved because I'm sure that spurred my creative, you know, genes and, and interest. So um, definitely. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, how you interact with a child life specialist? And because when I think of a child life specialist, I think, well, you know, do they do art too or, or how, how does that work? Yeah, so we are very fortunate to have a great team of child life specialists that we collaborate with every day. Um, And they, you know, there's two of us here at the hospital, but we're fortunate to have a child life specialist on every unit of our hospital. So they really are kind of the gateway to getting to know our patients and families. And um, they really, I think, give us that connection that we wouldn't have otherwise and kind of understanding you know, the difference. Yeah, uh, I think they're certainly advocates for our work. Um, they do, uh, we have a fair share of art supplies and crafts, and we have generous donors that give us a lot of kits and things that keep the kids busy. 
And when it comes to kids who need just a little more attention and art, they feel like art would be something to help them cope additionally, we can kind of partner with Child Life to see uh, how we can fit into that for the family. Yeah. Well, and, you know, tell us a little bit about the evidence-based research in regard to art therapy. I mean, I feel like I give this this presentation because I'm like, you know, I'll sit down and do art and I don't need anxiety pills. I mean, it helps on so right. many yeah. levels. Wonderful, yeah. Yeah, there's, there is a lot of research that shows that art can really enhance your quality of life and provide those physiological relief that, you know, you can't really get otherwise. And it's really that act of expressing yourself in that process that, I think helps people cope and learn new ways of dealing with the stressors, especially coming from the medical perspective and the non-pharmacological pain management initiatives. And um, there's a lot of growing research in that area as well. And so, you know, everything is growing and we're looking forward to kind of seeing where that path takes us in the research field. Mm -hmm. Well, and, you know, I was just thinking about, I mean, I'm sure you have personal experiences, but does any come to mind of of a patient that you saw just transform by giving them an art therapy project? Oh, yeah. we, have, we love telling stories about our patients, but the telling stories, and maybe just to piggyback off of the evidence-based research, we aren't researchers here, uh, Raj and I aren't, but we do witness a lot of those things happening that... Of course, we'd like to put in that bucket of research is um, just seeing, you know, we have our kids who are on PCA pumps for pain, and when we're working with them, sometimes they don't press them at all, and they don't discuss the pain. It's it's a respite from the pain. Not that it's not there, but right. it isn't taking, maybe it's taking a bit of a back seat just for a short period of time, and we hope that that helps them build that strength and resilience to tackle what's ahead of them. Mm-hmm. Um, You know, I think about my own journey, and when we're in pain or we have some kind of health issue, we really feel out of control. And we may have the physical pain, but the feeling out of control for me is more painful. And so when I I like to do any type of craft, I was into buttons for a while. If you ever need any buttons, I can send you some buttons. Oh, Um, we love buttons. Yeah, (laughs) we have a lot of buttons. (laughs) Oh, my God. There's There's so much fun. Don't ever throw a button away again. (laughs) Um, But I I would just, you know, I I had a really hard time in my life and, you know, I would just sort the buttons and I made little bracelets and stuff. But the fact is, as I realized, is that I was in control of the buttons and and that Mm -hmm. made me feel better because humans are designed to want to be in control. We don't like it when we're not in control. So I think a, a fun, you know, little aspect about doing, you know, we're in control of the project if it turns out good or bad, but it, it's just a very um, healing feeling. Um, right. <laughs> and the kids here, you know, and I'm sure you've experienced, your, you don't have that control when you're in the medical setting with your illness. And so that control piece is so important. And it really, I think, allows the patient to really gain empowerment through that process. I think you have a kindred spirit here at Mott because there was a a teenage um, girl that I was working with who found great relief and stress relief from sorting um, beads. Mm -hmm. So she had, you know, I had a little bucket with a little uh, compartment and she, she sorted those. She said it was calming for her. And so I really took that to heart, and I always made sure she had lots of beads um, if she felt like sorting. Was she ever coming to California? I, I could put her to work for a while. <laughs> you know. a good team. <laughs> I know. It's, uh, there's also this little app, and, you know, I think art, because it's tactical, you feel it. But there's this game now, and I downloaded it a couple of days ago, where you match items, like you match lipstick, yeah, and you pull it together. I'm like, yeah. It's so addictive. Um, it's uh, uh, it, because it's repetitive and it takes your mind to a different space. Um, it's it's really right, fun. Definitely. That. And I think it's so interesting how unique each patient and family's needs are too. The sorting, you know, that that worked for you, and then some totally different things will work for other kids. And just being open to hearing their stories um, and really getting to know them on a personal level um, helps us 
be helpful. Well, um, have you ever gotten together with a group? And, you know, I don't want to say it's a bead and bitch group, um, but it does allow you to have the ability to be able to chit chat and share your feelings. There's something that happens when you get together with a group of people and are making something. You tell stories and it's right. so healing. It's so incredibly healing. Yeah. Um, I can, think that that community aspect is so important here too. And unfortunately before COVID, we were so grateful to have the opportunity to have so many groups with our um, patients and families. And it really became a place of respite and an opportunity for them to meet other families who were going through the same thing. And the art kind of was that avenue and bringing them all together. Well, have you seen that art therapy improves self-esteem? Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, that would be a yes. <laughs> <laughs> strong yeah yeah <laughs> and are you know uh do you suggest encouraging children to talk about their artwork while they're making it I think it's something that we always leave up to them if there's an opportunity where they're wanting to share about their art then we always want to foster that but really I think the art speaks for itself in many ways and I think that just the act of creating is sometimes enough and sometimes the words kind of minimize the whole process of what they are experiencing in that moment. I feel like in, in groups or individuals, when they do want to talk, it just flows freely yeah. from them. And that's something that they can control. We want them to be able to be in control of that. They, they get a lot of questions asked about them here that are forced, kind of, they're forced to answer. So it's just a delicate balance, I think. Uh, and holding that space for that conversation to happen if they choose for that. Well, and, you, you know, it's interesting because uh, we had a campaign at RSN um, a year ago called Share Your Spare, and it's about kind of a kidney disease awareness, about being a living donor. And we heard from people that they got the kit, and it was the first time that they ever really talked about donation at their family and it was because they were looking at the little stuffed toys and reading the little book and it took the focus off of what was the actual topic but it gave them a lead way in to talk about it and i mm -hmm. think you know mm -hmm. i think having art and sometimes a different aspects it, it really lets your guard down about uh speaking about what you're really feeling um can you share some of the art projects you've done now that i'm kind of curious and you know do you do you do all do you do photography everybody has a phone nowadays i mean wow you can yeah. do online <laughs> online digital artwork mm -hmm. yeah um actually one of my patients he is very into photography and actually is creating his own photography business and so he's always showing me all of his new work that he's doing outside of the hospital. And we have a gallery here at the hospital, and so he was able to share some of his work with the community here at Mott just to kind of showcase himself as an artist, not so much as a patient, but that other identity of who he is. So that was always pretty cool to witness he's, that. He's an artist who has kidney disease, not a patient who's an artist. I mean, right. it's, right. so, artist, it's so interesting yeah. to... Uh, God, I'd love to see his artwork now. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, there was um, a young girl that I worked with who would sew with me every time she would come on Saturdays. We would sew together. And so that kind of became her respite. Every week she knew we would have art therapy time together during dialysis. And we would create little stuffed animals together on the sewing machine and she was limited because of her fistula so we really worked together as a team to kind of you know I would guide the fabric and she would push the pedal and it was this back and forth kind of relationship that we we really grew from and I think that that helped her look forward to her time on dialysis versus dreading having to come every day. Uh, you know, that's that's so important. Whenever I ask somebody, you know, what are you looking forward to? And if they say nothing, I feel it's a barometer for the person being depressed. Uh, that's mm -hmm. my little litmus test. And, you know, when you talk to people who are in arts and crafts and who are artists, and I have several friends, it's like, 
we always are looking forward to making the next art project <laughs> and we're thinking mm-hmm. about it and it's it gives us something to look forward to and you need something to look forward to when you're dealing with this illness or it can get really really difficult um mm-hmm. it sounds mm-hmm. like where you guys are at are you guys unique in your art therapy program or do a lot of different hospitals across the country kind of have the same setup i I'm, I'm not sure i mean i'd like to think that we're unique in a good way <laughs> <laughs> um but we try to provide service to inpatient and outpatient and have our galleries and try to support our child life people so I mean, I'm I'm not entirely it's, sure what other it hospitals. It sounds fascinating. I mean, I'm, it makes me want to be a pediatric patient again. When I did mm. art therapy as a kid, I mean, we go to a little room, we make a little project, and nobody saw it, and nobody like you know to put something on the wall and have it kind of displayed at the hospital. I imagine just helps the people who made it so much by saying, "Wow, I feel valued. Yeah, they like what I it's did." It's really like a metamorphosis to see them when. They'll, a lot of times, well, pre-COVID, we would try and if the family, patient family wanted to, help us install the gallery. And I think that was an unexpected kind of gem in having this gallery space is that they get to really be the owners of organizing their pictures and seeing them up in frame just the way they want them to be. I think that was, that's like a thrill that we have to, to see that happen. Mm-hmm. So just the joy and pride that they have in being seen as an artist. Um, it is because you, and lose, like you said, not a, not a patient, but an artist. You lose your identity a, a lot of times. You become so much of. Um, I do a prom every year for all the teenagers with kidney disease, and I just um, we just hosted our twenty second prom, and you know I remind That's the awesome. kids <laughs> it is pretty fun. I am a prom queen. Okay, um, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, it took me twenty years, uh, twenty two proms now. But, you know, every year we come up with theme and, you know, we do all the decorations and we have so much fun. There's a group of us and and it's so, so rewarding. But, you know, I can say that I've come across a lot of kids that they don't have anything that's their own. You know, sometimes they fall into the the trap of, you know, they may not be able to go to school or, you know, parents may be helicopter parents and don't want them to do anything to hurt themselves. Or I, I've witnessed all kinds of things over the years. And I just know as an individual, you have to find a place. And this is advice for everybody on the planet. But you have to find something that's your own that you can just go off and do and enjoy yourself. And it doesn't mm-hmm. rely on any other people. I, I feel like if everybody did that in the world, it'd be a much better place. <laughs> mm-hmm. So true. And, uh, and in a lot of ways, I feel like art is uh, art is survival. It's a survival skill. Right. It is. I mean, you know, I... I uh, art artists go I have this um I have several art books and reading back you know to they're mostly male artists I have a little bone to pick with that I think um, some women <laughs> pretended they were men because of anyways we still got to break through the glass ceiling a little bit more but um you know just throughout our history art you can look at a picture and you can just stare at it for an hour and and it, it gets you in touch with your feelings. And, you know, the fact that, you know, art isn't always seen as a necessity. I believe it's a necessity and should be in, you know, available everywhere. You know, I'm a little bit curious about what kind of art projects you do. Um, here, the kids, I think across the board, painting is the favorite. All Everybody, yeah. <laughs> where everybody <laughs> loves to paint. So we have, we should get stock in Kansas. <laughs> um, we go through uh, quarts and quarts of paint and tons of brushes. And I think that just seems to be like a, just a great release. It's very freeing. It can be very, um, you know, precise and tight if you want it, or just very loose and free and abstract. It's just a lot of freedom with the uh, methods, and mm-hmm. I, I guess that would be one of the, yeah. the top things that we do. Yeah, I'd um, say clay is a very popular material also. I think just like the tactile quality of clay and being able to manipulate it in different ways, I think is really a great release for a lot of kids too, and just the play aspect of it too is mm-hmm. huge. 
Um, I guess we leave, you know, the project ideas up to the patients and families, and we really try to empower them to come up with some great ideas that they have. And that includes, um, like, we've done quilt making and sewing and painting, and there's so many different different ways that we've been able to connect with the patients and families. And also, like, connecting with nature, I think we can paint on rock, things that are sustainable, like, that can happen outside of these walls. We have a lot of resources, but a lot of people don't have access to all the stuff we have. So if we can kind of plant that seed um, and how we can use what we have in our surroundings to create art, too. Like, I use a ton of boxes. We go through boxes like water here. So they're all being recycled. I go grab a few. We cut them down and build furniture or any kind of structures. We do rock painting. Um, Collage. Yeah, 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 just anything that, it doesn't have to be anything fancy to be meaningful. You know, uh, I just got a gel press last summer. I don't know if you've ever seen a gel press. It's really cool oh, no. paint. Um, and you can take leaves from outside. Oh, you'll have to check it out. It's so much fun. Oh. Um, and it's pretty simple. You just use regular paint. You just get a gel press. And you can print magazines on your paper. It's pretty pretty darn nifty. Um, and then I was, uh, I don't know about you, but I'm a little bit addicted to Pinterest. Um, because... <laughs> oh yeah, lots of lots of boards. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, I was kind of scrolling because I had an idea to do like a little mosaic um, for a pendant because I make jewelry and I paint. And um, anyways, I saw these beer bottle caps that were bent into making a flower, and they were beautiful. And it was just beer bottle caps. And they folded cool. over the really beer cool. bottle cap to make like the, uh, and they did magnets and they were all different colors. And then, of course, if you get more than six of anything, it looks great together. And so right. they paint yeah. and it was like, oh, my God, this is, and then you give a reason. You can make somebody in the family, hey, Dad, you've been drinking too much beer. Let me have those caps, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, it's, um, you know. There's so much inspiration around us, and I, I'm i always amazed there's some videos going on about, you know, what you can make from the dollar store, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and, right. and just yeah. mesmerized by those videos. Does insurance cover this? I mean, everybody asks about, well, who's going to pay for it? <laughs> right. Well, child life is... Uh, so for the services that we provide, there is there's no charge, and insurance is not billed. We're under the umbrella of Child Life, and um, we're all donor funded. Um, our salaries are even donor funded, so we don't really have that kind of uh, regulation, I guess, which opens it up so that actually it's in our favor because we can see anyone, people who don't have insurance, who do have insurance, if that doesn't matter to us, we can see anybody. So I, I feel like that's to our advantage, luckily. That sounds and wonderful. Because of our donors. We have great donors. And you don't have to document it all to, you know, sit there and document like, oh, they used red, they used green, they used yellow. <laughs> um, I'm sure that makes your life a lot easier. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hear some of my friends who are healthcare professionals like, I can't believe I got to write all this stuff. You know, to wrap up, I, I would say for people who don't have access to an art therapist, maybe you can give them some advice on how important it is and, you know, how to get people started. Because you can just start as an art project with your family. Yeah. I don't yeah. think it needs to be anything complicated. It's just looking around what you have at home, old magazines and paper bags and scissors. You can tear things. I mean, it's just trying to see your surroundings in a different light, I guess, would be, I don't know, maybe a little bit of advice. Yeah, and I think, too, like looking beyond the art world and thinking about other ways that you can be creative, like gardening and cooking and, mm -hmm. you know, those types of activities that are also engaging and creative in different ways. Whatever brings you joy, yeah. that's where you start. And I think art is limitless, and so having, you know, the, the capacity to see different engagements will be super helpful. And, and there's so much inspiration because there is a board about 
anything on Facebook. I mean, I'm on a yeah. couple of art boards and, and a jewelry board. And then this weekend, they had like a weekend bead class, free bead classes that you could watch. And and then, you know, I don't know if you've heard of this or if it's in Michigan yet, but it's it's called Buy Nothing on Facebook. Have you heard of that? No. Oh, it's I, so- I, is it like a swap, like a, a free kind of page where you kind of unload some of your materials that you don't use? Well, what it does is you go to Facebook and you find the one in your area. So I'm in the Buy Nothing Ros Moines area, which is in my area. And then people, you know, say give and gratitude. But, you know, I want to give these three hats away. And then people reply, I would love to be considered for the blue hat or, you know, and then you private message each other and then you pick it up. And Art supplies are always on this page and I get, I have to hold myself back because I keep saying, <laughs> oh my God, that burnt, you know, I'm like, oh, that, that could be redone. And oh my God, this could be, you know, it, and all they want is for you to come pick it up. And it's, it's a great way for people who may not have a lot of resources to really, you know, get their little art stash going on. I'm a, I'm on some Facebook um, page that's called Upcycling. So they're taking just household things that people are throwing out. Same kind of thing, same mm-hmm. concept. I, there was one artist that was using nuts and bolts and, like, tools and things, you know, you'd find out in an old, a shed, nails, you name it, um, bending them and adding, painting. It was uh, incredible. Like, mm-hmm. I saw somebody who was cutting intricate um, designs on leaps. I mean, yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's endless, really. I know. I saw this. Uh, I was so inspired. I was going to make one, but it was a a wind chime made out of silverware, <laughs> and oh, it was in yeah. some and some different household items. And I have my little stack of spoons, and and I'm like, wait a second, I need some heavy duty tools to be able to do this. So maybe I need to wait <laughs> on it. But um, you know, it's just so much fun to uh, get involved with creative people and you know i really i really appreciate what you guys do and in closing um can you just reemphasize how important it is for people to have a creative outlet um as art therapists i mean you're trained in it but the benefits that you will receive i think just engaging in any act of creating is a healing process and it really is kind of an infectious energy that once you start, you can't stop. And I think that it opens up so many more opportunities for healing and just for self-expression and coping. And it really is an avenue for change. And, and I've learned over the years, if because I do consider myself a little bit of an art addict. I mean, there were two things I learned. One was is that... You know, when you're thinking about making something, and I don't, I don't know if this is exactly true, but when you're thinking about it, you get almost as much benefit as making it. And mm-hmm. I, I, you know, and I have a little art kit that I have ready to go whenever I go to the hospital. Because I know it just makes me feel better. It's like I need to have something creative. Um, During my third transplant, I did all these color penciling posters when I was there because I knew that, you know, if I had to be in the hospital for a couple weeks, I need something to do. And, And I've also learned, and I don't know if you can concur with this, with art, there are three types of hobbies. And I think I might have all of them. But it's buying the supplies, it's sorting the supplies, (laughs) and it's using the supplies. So (laughs) I just recently saw that. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah, I like to buy them. I do love to sort them. And I do (laughs) like to use them. Now, will I use all the supplies that I have? I don't know. But I sure love the process of it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are a couple patients that now you kind of reminded me of them that in their hospital bags, they have all their art supplies ready to go. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of um, an essential for them to bring right along with their shampoo and fresh change clothes. I mean, that's 
that's what they found works for them. And I just think that's wonderful. It's my kidney kin there. I know. I'm like, yeah, I, I you got many over here. <laughs> and, and, you know, the thing is, is that I may never use it, but I love the fact that it's there if I need it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And well, I think just being surrounded by it, too, or just having it there to look mm-hmm. at. Like you were saying, you don't necessarily have to be doing it, but... It's kind of an extension of who you are. Exactly. And, you know, the other thing, too, is I found in the hospital, if I, because I would do beading or I'll do like a Shambhala type of bracelet so the beads don't roll all over, is that it creates some incredible conversations with the healthcare professionals because they're coming in to see you like, probably not feeling well and then they're coming like ooh beads <laughs> you know like mm-hmm. it changes the whole yep. dynamic with the healthcare staff Definitely. I found and then they tell me what they make and then I feel better because I know them and I trust them a little better because I've gotten to get to know them so it's a win I've noticed in our units that when you're making art it creates the sense of calm in the environment that I think you know the other healthcare professionals who are present kind of absorb that energy too and it's a it's a really cool thing to witness well you know i appreciate both of you for choosing art therapy raja and kathy i mean if i had to go back to school i know i would be an art therapist i mean i (laughs) i'm always you know doing little art projects and um and i'm hoping that you guys will join our art contest and get your kids to join that we have coming up um here at rsn go to rsnhope.org and it the art contest closes april 22nd so Please get your patients to, you know, upload. They can win up to 500 bucks. Hey, that's a that's a lot of wow, art supplies. Very cool. <laughs> but, we uh, will for sure. But thank you so much. And I can't wait to uh, see what you guys make next. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks for listening to Kidney Talk, a program of Renal Support Network. Please make sure to find us on Facebook or sign up for our newsletter at rsnhope.org. Kidney Talk is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment from your physician. Always seek the advice of your own health care provider regarding your medical condition.